Here's your tutorial, guys, on the site plan activity for your affordable home project. Okay, so first off, we're going to start here in Schoology, and then we're going to move into Revit from there. Okay, so first off, you should be at this point now, uh, kind of have an idea of different things to think about when you're dealing with the site plan. Uh, so the first thing you might want to look at, for example, is the design criteria. So when you click on that, it'll open up this uh, PDF, which will look for things like... Uh, it should talk about prevailing winds, which direction the wind's coming from, um, <clears throat> as well as possibly some other temperature-related issues. So that's what we're going to kind of talk about first. And hold on, let me pause. All right, so as I was saying, there's going to have the prevailing winds is something you want to keep track of, uh, making sure you don't have too many windows coming that way, as well as uh, you do want to make sure your sunlight's coming through to help with energy savings and just in general, uh, keeping temperatures where you want them to be in your house. Okay, so that's uh, some of the, the data you can look at there. And then the other portion to that is the map of the location. Um, so that will take you to the Google Maps. Uh, but here's a couple of screenshots. You can see that uh, the site is in Noblesville, Indiana. And it's on the corner here of Maple and 10th. All right, so I don't know if you can see that well here on my screen, but this is 10th and Maple, and ours is going to be right on this corner. Right. So after that, you're going to try to place it onto our Revit site plan. So the, the site file is actually here, so you can go ahead and click on that here button. And it should load up, uh, or should give you the option to download this Revit file. So go ahead and hit download. All right. As soon as it finishes downloading, uh, for me on Chrome, it pops up here. I'll hit open, and it should open up in your... Um, in your Revit. So if you have Revit open already, it should start loading up. Um, personally, I had it already open, so uh, I'll go pull it up over here. Okay, so when you get to this point, it'll look something like this. All right, so you see here, we've got 10th and Maple. Uh, some of the utilities are already laid out here. You see like things like manholes and utility poles. Uh, here's the streets. Um, you also see some of the sidewalks already built in there as well as this little um, alleyways. Okay, so there's an alleyway coming on the off of Maple, and there's an alley coming off from 10th. All right, and oh, looks like actually this is left over from last time. Let me delete that real quick. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, at this point, you're going to kind of follow through depending on what was asked here. So I'll go back to Schoology for a second. Oops. And if you see on Schoology, we're going to update your site plan with the following. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is these setback and property lines. Okay, so if I click on that, that's actually a link to tell you um, what the property lines are like. And the way we're going to do that is using this table. Uh, and the way this table works is saying that the property is going to be essentially 135 square feet, right? So 135 feet in every direction. Uh, and then the way the bearings work is kind of the direction the line would would go from. And in this case, it's, the line is going to go south from that initial spot. Um, no, There's going to be no angle there. And then um, the west-east line in this case doesn't matter because it's going to be zero degrees. Uh, but that would be what direction you're going to from the, the angle. Okay, so you can kind of see here, uh, we're going to start in this top right-hand corner of the plot plan. And the first one's going to go 135 feet south. So it's going to follow this all the way down 135 feet south that way. And then we're going to go 135 feet north, 90 degrees of west. Okay, so um, I should say it this way, 90 degrees west of north. Right, so from this point, we're going to go 90 degrees west. So it's, that's this line. The next one is um, north, again, zero degrees. So it's going to be just straight 135 north. And then the last one is 135 and 90 degrees from the northeast, so it's going to be uh, 135 this way, and that's what's going to create this uh, nice little property line square. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to come back over here to Revit, and the first thing I'm going to do is go under Massing and Site, go to Property Line, and we're going to do it this way, creating, create, entering distances and bearings. Okay, so we're going to create by entering distances and bearings, and this menu should pop up. And that's where we're going to put all that information. Okay, so as uh, you saw earlier, we're going to start with 135, um, and we're going to go south, and we're going zero degrees south, and uh, east-west line actually doesn't matter because we are not going any direction. Okay, so we have that first one, 
insert the next one again is 135 feet and this one we are going to go west so 9 degrees west of north and there's that one and we'll go hit the next one is 135 feet again north um, 0 degrees so it doesn't matter which way we're going from there and then the last one to finish it up 135 feet this we're going to go north east 90 okay and these are all going to be line types and that should be good okay, so hit OK and notice now I've got my property line box wrapped up here I'm going to try to find this corner that I'm starting off in and go ahead and click on this corner Okay, so now my property lines should be in there, as you can see there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some tags, so property line tags to that portion. Okay, so to do that, I'm coming over here, over to, should be under uh, architecture. Okay, and then under architecture, there's this option for tag all not tagged. Okay, so we're going to tag those property lines. Now when I click on that button, this menu should pop up. And we want to include property tags. So once I click on that and I hit apply, oops, oh, property line segment, sorry. That's the one I, this gave you the total acres, so it's a little less than half an acre. Uh, I don't need to keep that there right now. I want the property line segment tags. Sorry, I told you the wrong thing. Hit apply, and you'll notice that all of those bearings that I just mentioned there with the distances are all listed there now. Okay, so hit OK. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this for now. We don't need that. <clears throat> okay, the next portion is adding the setbacks. Okay, so remember, setbacks are determined kind of by the zoning. And so uh, you need to be a certain distance away from the street. You need to be a certain distance away from other properties. And so for this one, we're going to set up some, um, some setback setbacks. All right, so to create the setback lines, I'm going to first by coming over here to Manage. And I'm going to go under Additional Settings, and there is an option for Line Styles. Okay, we're actually going to create a setback line style because it doesn't exist right now. Okay, um, we're actually probably going to end up doing some sort of hidden line, but we'll go ahead and start a new one. Okay, and we'll call this one Setback Lines. Hit OK. Okay, so now this shows up here. Now uh, let's go ahead and make these red to show them more obviously. Hit OK, and we want this to be a dashed line. Okay, so I'll scroll down until you see dash, oh, right there. Okay, so now we've got those in there. Hit apply, hit OK. All right, so now when I go to annotate and I go to detail line, and actually, you know what? I think I'm going to want to do this as an offset. Okay, so I'm going to start by doing an offset. And for example, from the street, we want these to be 25 feet from the street. Okay, so I can go do an offset 25 and we're going to make a copy from this line okay and as i get closer let me see if i can find the line Oops. enter all right and i'm going to try to offset from this street so i'm having a hard time finding this line right now let me pause it all right, uh, and so sorry, to, to finish up with the setbacks, where we are going to be looking is getting um, some setback lines drawn. So at this point, I'm going to come back over here to annotate and detail line. And actually, the first one I'm going to do is um, just to, as a kind of a reference line. And so I'll just do a hidden lines here. And I'm going to make a box that goes around from the street. So I'll start from this corner. And I'm, I'm just going to kind of get a rough spot there it doesn't have to be exact and I'm going to come down here to this other corner where the the alleys meet okay so now I kind of have those lines drawn and just, those are just really reference lines for me okay so now if I go back to annotate and I'm going to go to detail line oh, here on this side let me hit escape a couple times go to detail line and now I'm going to come over here to set back lines and we're going to set it as an offset from where we just uh, draw the, drew that box. Okay, so the, from the street should be 25 feet. So I come over here. If I click on that line, 
it'll automatically oops hold on sorry let me go back here yikes all right one more time detail line I'm gonna go to offset 25 feet from this line and it'll pull it if you notice if I click on that line then I create a line right there and I want another one from this street okay so there's two lines now uh, and then I need to change this to 10 feet from those back alleys Okay, so change that to 10. Now I click on this line back here, and then this line back here. And now I've got my setbacks. Okay, now I'm going to trim them up a little bit. So I want this and this. Uh, trim this one and this one. And then this one and this one. And then finally from here to here. Okay, so now I've got my setback lines drawn. Um, which I did want to make these... You can control click to get a few of them. And I did want to make these red instead, so I'm going to change this to setback lines. Okay, and it should be turning red. It's just a little bit laggy on my end. Okay, so now we got our setbacks, and then at that point, we're just going to add some annotation in terms of how far away they are from the street, things like that. Okay, so you can kind of see from my example here, uh, adding text by the end of it, it should some, look something like this, where you have your 25 foot building line, 25. Uh, actually, this side looks like it should be 25 as well. Okay, I guess this was a main, main street too, and then that would be 10. All right. Um, Sure. I'm going to save the next video to talk about how to link your Revit file as well as adding some uh, sidewalks and driveways. Uh, I think that's enough for this video.